Releasing in 2004 on November 21st for a launch price of $150, you can get yourself one of these bad boys. And bad boy, it is, let me tell you, it's not good. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, I love the DS, and I'm not going to sell this one, mostly because I don't think I can sell it. <laughs> but it's an important piece of history, and it's actually a cromulent DS. I know it's the first of its kind, so can't really fault it for the steps, as it's the f uh, it was the first DS to take those steps. But uh, we're, we're going to get into that. We're gonna, I'm going to get into why before I get... Uh, pitchforks in the comments. Although I do think a lot of people will agree with my, my points. But the original DS does not have the greatest screens. And it's not a problem if you're just playing through action games like, um, let's say, Bejeweled 3, because world's best action game. Or if you're playing through Dragon Quest Rocket Slime, Ace Attorney, you know, stuff like that. The colors are fine, uh, but in games like Pokemon, where uh, color can mean everything, uh, I won't show you this video, or else I'll be showing you all day. But uh, I recently just completed my Pokedex in Emerald, and uh, on through that process, I actually managed to catch a shiny Whelmer. That Whalmer shows up very poorly on these screens. And it's not like the game just has... It's not like Whalmer just has a bad shiny. Because if I were to put it onto my uh, IPS modded Game Boy Advance, you actually can see the, uh, you actually can see the pink really well. But like I said, the screens aren't the greatest. But Nintendo, I like to hope and think that they tried to prioritize uh, production uh, cost over final sale value. That way, uh, Nintendo, well, that way they can produce the best screen and still stay within a price point. Now, uh, this actually is a pretty fun system, all things considered. Uh, it is almost identical in, uh, in function to the DS Lite. However, the DS Lite, actually, the board is completely different. Uh, in the original DS, the shoulder cable, the shoulder buttons are uh, attached via ribbon cables, as they are on the DS Lite. But where the ribbon cables are, are actually very different. And the buttons as well. I don't know if you had a DS Lite, but we, we'll get to that eventually, uh, later down the road. But here you have the power button, you have the select and start, and then at the bottom, you have the volume switch, you have the headphone jack. Other than that, there are no more buttons on the sides. Other than the shoulder buttons, of course. It still used the Game Boy Advance SP charger, which, like I said, I... Uh, I'm going to assume was Nintendo trying to save money and have backwards compatibility with the old chargers in the same boot. Uh, I would have preferred had they did something proprietary and then sold the adapter like they did for the headphone jack. Point is, uh, you can use your original Game Boy Advance SP chargers on these. And uh, you actually can type C mod the Game Boy Advance SPs like I have done for this one. And I imagine because it's the same charger, you can type C mod these too. But I don't know why you would. Um, overall, I think that the original DS is very important. However, I probably wouldn't be. Uh, I probably won't be playing it for a while. Not because this one's broken. In fact, I actually fixed this one. Uh, I bought two different DSs on eBay, and I mashed them together to make one good DS, and that's what came out of this one. Uh, 
but I'm not going to be playing it because there are better, better alternatives, especially the DS Lite. Um, but even then, I'm not going to be playing the DS Lite. Like I said, different video. Don't want to be going, going on too long. want to keep this short and sweet so it's digestible. I would say 8 out of 10. Um, what I preferred, they had used a separate fast, uh, faster charging cable. Because these things take forever to charge. Like, even in comparison to the D uh, Game Boy and DS Lite, these things take forever. This definitely was too big of a battery for the charger. Um, other than that, it's fine. The screens are tolerable. If you have the choice between this one and the DS Lite, uh, if money is a huge issue and you can't afford a DS Lite, the DS is definitely something I wouldn't be too chuffed to be stuck with. But if you have the choice for a DS Lite on original DS, just go for a DS Lite. They are capable of the exact same thing, and the DS Lite overall is a better experience, you know, as all version 2s should be. Um, a, a, a big thing that's happening with a lot of these older ones is these hinges are starting to break. So some of you, like me, may be tempted to uh, grab some grab a couple of them and mash them together to make a good functional one. Uh, but after buying the new shell and two broken DSs to do that with, uh, I can promise you I ended up spending the same amount of money to buy one of these anyways. Uh, however, for me, it was more about the experience of having done it than it was the money to have the money that was to be saved by doing it myself. Uh, this specific DS, you actually get to solve, you actually got to solve, see the process of me doing that. It was titled, uh, This Thing is a Nightmare and Never Again. And I stand by it, I'm not doing a DS reshell again. Uh, without further ado, leave a like, subscribe, let me know down in the comments how about, uh, about you feel on the original DS. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time, where I will be doing a review on. You know what, let's say it, the GameCube.